Well, hello, friends. Mark Holmes here. And as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. So now, why don't you <laughs> sit your ass down so we can have a little bit of a talk? It's been actually a long day. I've been on the road, got about 320 miles behind me. And ended up busting ass, getting stuff done. But that's the way you got to do it. Got to make the most of every single day. And so I am back home and, of course, catching up with all the news that is the Dallas Cowboys. And, you know, we're in the silly season now. You know, some teams are out there making some moves and stuff. And they realize that the guys that they thought that were going to be the replacements quarterbacks, they're actually realizing it's not that easy to get one. So... The Green Bay Packers, who drafted Jordan Love, realize there's no love there, and they realize that they can't replace Aaron Rodgers with the love. And we're also finding out that it may be that Jimmy G is not that free agent that people were coveting because they realize that Trey Lance is probably not going to be ready to play yet either, if ever. Because this is the thing that's so funny to me. Um, today I was reading some of the comments earlier today, taking a break and stuff, and I saw somebody say that the Cowboys won't win the Super Bowl until they draft a Super Bowl quarterback. The Combine's next week. The Combine's next week. I don't know that there was a – I didn't. I must have missed this one. This must be a new thing that they have a Super Bowl winning combination drill at the combine. So that way you know that the guy you're drafting is a Super Bowl winning quarterback. Because it seems like so many of y'all are kind of out of the loop. Because they always, I, I always hear people say, if we just had Aaron Rodgers, man, we, we'd be winning the Super Bowl. I was like, you know he hasn't won it in like, 11 years, right? You, you understand that, right? He has not won the last 11 years. Or they'll say, oh, man, you know, if we could have had Drew Brees and everything. I was like, you know, Drew Brees had 13-3 and three teams two years there along with 11-6. and six, I'm sorry, 11-5 and five and a 12-4 and four team, and they didn't make it to the Super Bowl, right? So do you blame those guys for not making the Super Bowl? They'll say, if we just get Russell Wilson. Well, Russell Wilson's numbers right now are kind of like his rookie year. And he doesn't have the Legion of Boom. And he ain't been to the Super Bowl in like nine years or so. So I'm trying to understand where we find that Super Bowl winning quarterback because, you know, until this year, Matthew Stafford hadn't won one. But be that as it may, be that as it may, it's NFL silly season. We know next week starts the combine. The week after that starts free agency. And everybody is looking for stuff to talk about. And this is one of those ones where I got to say, the fuck are you talking about? Seriously. So I was reading an article in Bleacher Report here, and they said the Dallas Cowboys three possible franchise tags. Now, understand the Dallas Cowboys have only used a franchise tag Eight times, originally on, I believe, Emmett Smith was the first franchise tag that they ever used. So in that time, they've only used eight. They used it on Dak Prescott. They used it on Marcus Lawrence. They used it on Des Bryant. And I know Emmett Smith. I'm trying to remember who else they may have done it with. But, but be that as it may, they have not used it very often. The way the franchise tag works is it's basically a one-year fully guaranteed contract for the player. And it is the average of the top five in your group. You take the top five paid in whatever position that is, divided by five, and that's the number for the franchise tag. So I actually said that the only one that I thought would have a chance at being franchise tagged would maybe be Dalton Schultz because it's $11 million, which isn't, you know, terrible amount of money. 
But I don't think that the Cowboys are looking at that because there's going to be a lot of free agent tight ends out there that you can probably get for less money than that. And see, the problem with the franchise tag is this. It's a hard number. You can't put a voidable year on it. You can't, you know, uh, make a signing bonus. The number is the number. So it's hard. Now, the Cowboys at this moment are $21 million over the cap, which will drop by about $16 million because Dak's contract will be restructured. There may be some other ones as well as there may be some cuts to some guys, too, to reduce those numbers. We know that Amari Cooper has become public enemy. No, public enemy. He's public enemy number one. And we know that um, Demarcus Lawrence might be on the chopping block. It could be Tyron Smith. There, there's a couple of guys that you could look at that could either be on the chopping block or the restructuring block. Either way, the Cowboys have to get underneath that, that number. So... Back to the franchise tag. So, I mean, I agree with them on that one. That, that yeah, he's definitely a possibility. Then they went on to Randy Gregory. That the Cowboys could franchise tag Randy Gregory. And they technically, they could. They could franchise tag the kicker if they wanted to, if he was a free agent. And the tag can just be a thing to buy you more time because you have until July 15th. To make a long-term deal. If you do not get that long-term deal by July 15th, then that deal becomes guaranteed and you have that cap number. So a lot of teams will use this and say, okay, we will negotiate and come up with a better number for us because most players don't like to play on the franchise tag. They want that long-term security. Okay. So the next target they said was Randy Gregory. Um, Randy Gregory, who has, I think, 16 sacks to his career. A guy I think that they want to keep. I, I think they do. I, I would have thought they would have already gotten a contract done for him. But, of course, they haven't. The Cowboys will probably come through hard and heavy and end up you know, all at once here right before the uh, beginning of the league year. But if you were to franchise tag Randy Gregory, we're talking about $21 million for one year. Now, granted, he missed out on a lot of money because he ended up getting busted for pass the duchy from the left, pass the duchy from the left. Okay, he, he lost a lot of money because of that. But that doesn't mean that the Cowboys want to go ahead and make it all up on one season by franchise tagging him. You literally, to pay that, you would have to restructure and cut a hell of a lot of mother humpers if you're not getting a long-term deal. So I look at that and say, yeah, he could be a target, but why the hell would you tar- – come on, man. Let's be real here. Let's be real. And so the third target that they had on the list, which truly blows my mind, I'm like, come on, man. Seriously? They say Michael Gallup. Michael Gallup's number would be about $20 million as a franchise tag. We're talking about getting rid of Amari Cooper at $22 million because he didn't catch enough. You know, He wasn't involved enough in the play calling, in, in, in receptions and things, and then the whole COVID issue and stuff. So you're telling me that you would be willing to pay Michael Gallup about $20 million franchise tag, but not Amari Cooper for 22 coming off an ACL. Seriously? Come on, man. Y'all got to do better than that. That's some, come on, that's some bullshit right there. Amari Cooper, I mean, excuse me, Michael Gallup? You're saying franchise tag a guy who just tore his ACL and just had surgery a week and a half ago on it? Be for real, dudes. Come on, man. I know it's silly season, but let's not get crazy out here. Anyway, that's all I got to say about that. That's all the news that's going on. Oh, but back to this whole thing about, you know, we need to draft ourselves a Super Bowl winning quarterback. Uh, Again, I don't know what that means, but I'm sitting here saying Jimmy G might not be available. Russell Wilson may cost you three number ones if at all tradable Deshaun Watson. He's going to cost you like three number ones. 
Aaron Rodgers, who knows what the hell he's doing, but he's going to cost you like three number ones. But, you know, the funny thing, though, is everybody says Deshaun Watson is great, but he ain't got no ring. Everybody talks about Russell Wilson. He ain't had another ring since the Legion of Boom. Everybody talks about Aaron Rodgers. He ain't had one in 11 years. So, I don't know what you guys are talking about with this whole draft yourself a Super Bowl winning quarterback. But anyway, you guys know how we roll. Let me say thank you to everybody who sat their ass down and listened. And let me also say thank you to everybody who sent me condolences, uh, uh, kind words, and thoughts and things, and sharing their moments of losing their pets and how much it hurts and stuff. I really and truly appreciate each and every one of you guys, as well as you ladies, um, for helping me through a difficult time. And right now, it's a good time to laugh. I fire Howie. Fucking fire him. What an idiot! What an idiot! Dallas has Amore Cooper and Gallup, but we don't need a receiver! Are you kidding me? I don't want Justin Jefferson, he's ass! He's stupid! I fire his ass! I fire his ass! 